Hello again, it's Matthew here, and today we've got a new video, and today's video is about this. Now, this was another Facebook Marketplace find, and it's been through the wars a bit, but I think you can see why I would want to pick this up, because this is a 1970s Sound City 4x12 cabinet, and this guy had it, and he just wanted to get rid of it, it was in his garage, and... The thing with the 4x12 is there's a lot less love for them these days because people just have nowhere to put them. I mean, I'm lucky I've got this room that I can keep all my bits and bobs in um, and it's great. I can store my kit up here and, you know, it's where I've done all my music my whole life. But some people got nowhere to put it and certainly if I was just in my flat, I was no way I could keep any of this stuff. Anyhow, I picked this up and... What I thought I'd do is I'd show you inside it, we'll have a little look at it, and we'll see what we can do with it. Okay, well this cabinet has got a Velcroed on front, and if I pull the grill off, we can see inside the cabinet. Now, the grill itself has actually warped a bit. It's made of um, some sort of uh, chipboard, so, you know, it's not the best, best quality of uh, finish by any stretch of the imagination, but, you know, Amazingly, it hasn't got any rips or, or tears in it. And actually, it's not the, the weave on it, you know, is, you know, apart from that rip there, it's, it's not in not bad condition. Here, some of the, uh, the edging there's come off. But you know what? It, for, for something that, you know, didn't cost me a lot, I think it's fine. Now, obviously, you can see there's no speakers inside here. Interesting, this one's got like a, a paper, I think it's a paper were well, hardboard kind of surround there and I'm guessing all of the speakers probably had that at one point uh having said that yeah because you can see there's a holes here so that's still a still original um there's no nuts for the bolts here um but you know that's easy I've got a box of old bolts that were my dad so hopefully in amongst them there should be some to fit but yeah it's what it is it's a 4x12 cab it's made of chipboard and it's got a plywood front so it's very heavy it's, it's much heavier than the em an empty marshall 4x12 here is but you know these were these were made these were a lot cheaper to buy you know sound city were not an expensive brand okay i've just gone handheld on the camera so apologies for any wobbles uh this is looking at the back of the the um wiring inside the amp and there's two jack sockets there which was standard for this kind of cabinet. I would suspect they would have been wired in parallel. And if you follow the wiring, there's actually a tag board here. So the speakers would have been wired to this tag board. And there's two paths, if you like. There's two bits of wire, one there and one there. So this would have been standard wiring for 4x12 in the serial parallel mode. So you'd have two loudspeakers that would be wired in series against another two speakers wired in series and then they'd be wired in parallel to give the correct impedance. Now on this particular cab I haven't decided yet how I'm going to wire it but um, I will probably do it in that sort of standard configuration to give me the uh, the desired impedance. Anyhow let's have a look around the rest of the cab and if we go around the edge, I mean, it's a bit dusty, but it's actually in not too bad condition. It's, um, there's no major knocks or anything. It's even still got all its Velcro here. Um, there's various holes that we used as air ports to uh, let the air flow on the cab, but that's not too bad. If we look at the top, we can see that there's a bit of a Tolex has come off here, but that could easily be glued down with some copy decks. And um, this binding is still... Uh, all as it should be. We're looking at the back of the cab now and you can see that the Tolex is in not too bad condition apart from at the bottom. Now it's not got any casters or any feet so I would suspect this cab had spent a lot of its life being dragged around various bars and clubs of the southwest and that's it's got a bit rough underneath. But here's the most interesting bit right there. So here it's telling us it's a Type L60 or a Type L90F, or we'll look that up on the internet in a minute. And its serial number is 1401. And uh, it's also got AC mains and cycles. So this is basically a generic badge that would have been uh, on all their amplifiers as well as their speakers, and they just used it for the cab, obviously. This cab didn't have an amplifier inside it and wasn't used with mains or anything. It's just a speaker cabinet.
Okay, this is the Sound City site, which is uh, a website dedicated to Sound City equipment on the internet. And this is an L, it says here a 50 plus on the Dallas Arbiter L60 or B60. Well, mine's an L60 and it's the same color grill cloth, so that's the cab. And you can see there it's got casters on it, which I don't have, but I may get some in the future. But that's what it, it should look like, although this one, as you can see, is missing the, missing the badge. Right then, what do I propose to do with this cab? Well, I've got two pairs of speakers here. This is a pair of Celestian Super 65, and this is a pair of Celestian Rocket 50s. Now, they're both made by Celestian. The baskets, very, very similar indeed. In fact, I'd say they're almost identical. They are roughly the same weight. In fact, they feel almost exactly the same weight. They look very similar. So. In essence, I don't think there's going to be a huge amount of difference between these two pairs of speakers. As these speakers are very, very similar, but they're not identical, what I thought I would do in this cabinet is to wire them this way. So in essence, we're spreading the sound of the speakers. So we have one pair here, which will be wired um, together. So we've got the 65 and the 50 there, and then we've swapped them around at the bottom. So we'll get an even spread of the sound of the two speakers. Now, it, this might sound absolutely horrible, or it might sound all right. It's an experiment. And I'll do it in, the, in a series parallel wiring. So at the end of it, we will get an eight-ohm cabinet. Now, I know that's not ideal, but it's a good middle ground. Most amps, valve-wise, should have an eight-ohm tap on, on the back. And if they don't, then I just won't use it. But also I do have some solid state amps, such as the GP Electronics amps, and they will run eight ohm, no problem. So I think it will work quite well. So this is what I'm gonna do. Here's the cab with the speakers in. As you can possibly tell, the, the top left and bottom right are one pair and the bottom left and top right are another pair because the bottom left and top right have got a more reflective um, cone around the edge but it's fitted in okay now these bolts are a bit of a nuisance i didn't have quite enough bolts i think i'm missing a couple and they're actually quite difficult to get in because obviously these speakers are generally designed to be mounted a different way normally with the um the foam rubbing against the baffle rather than the other way around but anyway it, it's got there i've just popped my marshall head on the top i'm going to whack the front cover back on hook up a microphone and give this a quick sound test so you get an idea of what it sounds like. Okay then, so there's the amp, uh, the Marshall JTM45, going into the cab and this is our, this is our clean tone. that's just basic clean tone um like i normally do with these videos everything is just a microphone going straight into the camera there's no other processing effects or anything else now i did say i'd try this with a bit of overdrive as well now firstly i'm going to use the clone of the big muff pi that i built a few videos back which i've got here I go to the top of the pickup. Well, that does exactly what it says on the tin. That's a nice, fuzzy, thick, sort of 60s sound. Now, I've got another overdrive pedal with me here. And this is a bit historical for me because it's actually the first pedal that I ever owned. And uh, it's this one, it's the uh, Arian Distortion pedal, which um, came from the local music shop, Bill Greenhouse in Exeter. And I think my dad bought it for me in about 1988 or thereabouts. And um, it's, you know, I've had it all this time. It still works. And my actual first job when I left college was actually working in that music shop so it's got a bit of history to it anyway as you can hear it's pretty hissy but
So yeah, it's got that great typical 80s sound to it. And then if I stick some, say some... You can really hear the speaker does deliver the mids really nice. And a bit of, um, this is just a gain boost. If I sit the treble on as well. You know, 60s vibes just there, but uh, anyway, no, that, that cabinet is nice and solid, nice and heavy. Yeah, it's not elegant. It's not the most beautiful 4x12, but functional, I think, is the is the term. So anyway, that cabinet, same age as me, and uh, I think it'll probably outlive me somehow. But anyway, no, it's a great cab. Uh, really pleased with it. And, you know, you can pick these things up. I literally paid 10 quid for that cab. And you'll find other ones. Stick some speakers in it. And you've got yourself a really good speaker cabinet. I mean, if you've been watching um, Glenn Fricker's YouTube channel, he's done some stuff with an old Behringer cab, put some decent speakers in it, got some amazing results. And the same thing with that. You know, you can, if you've got speakers that are of a good brand and you can't go wrong with things like Celestians, you can buy any old Celestian, whack it in a cabinet, you can get half decent sound out of it. So... And obviously, if you put greenbacks or something like that in that cab, then it would be amazing. But I wouldn't have thought really that cab would warrant a set of greenbacks. But anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe. And I will say thank you to everyone that has subscribed to this channel because I've now hit my target of a thousand subscribers. And that means the channel can really grow now. So hopefully I'll be able to make more videos for you and hopefully you'll like more content I produce. So anyway, thanks for watching.